Okay, hi everyone, welcome to a brand new video. So this video is sort of going to follow up on the MongoDB versus Firebase topic, except this time we're going to specifically discuss this from the viewpoint of pricing. So for any app or startup, so any freelance developer or maybe a person behind a startup idea, should be very interested in trying to determine which of these databases to use. I have a previous video on this topic where we sort of follow and compare these different types of properties of each database and ask ourselves a series of questions to be able to determine which of these two different databases or these two different services is better for our app or startup. So if you're still interested in that topic, feel free to watch that video because it could possibly help you and aid you in just deciding what's better for your app. Now, the reason I'm making this video is that I want to go deeper into the idea of the pricing because the cost of things is very important for someone who is starting a business or a startup or an app that they want to maintain in the long term. So this is something that everyone should be interested in. And I wanted to sort of extend the talk on it in this video. So I did mention a few points of it in the last video with MongoDB versus Firebase. But here I just wanted to stress on the pricing point specifically. So to get started, in case you haven't seen that video or you don't plan to, and I definitely understand, so the things that we need to consider are what exactly we have here. So what are our choices as startup owners or app developers when choosing between MongoDB and Firebase? So it's important to know that in MongoDB, they, there are different versions of MongoDB that you can use. So you can have the normal MongoDB that you install on your machine. So this MongoDB is technically open source. Now, more on that later anyways, but you can download MongoDB, put it on your machine and work with it in your applications. You can have a sort of cloud service for your mobile applications. Now, this is MongoDB Realm. This was released last month, I believe, so in July 2020. And it was it's a combination of these two different services. And it's just a new approach that MongoDB is trying out for mobile dev. There's also MongoDB Atlas for the cloud specifically. So MongoDB Atlas, this is where you would see some similarities with the Firebase databases. So it's essentially just a no SQL database on the cloud. Now, for Firebase, Firebase is a backend as a service and it provides a multitude of services from authentication to cloud storage to machine learning to hosting to cloud messaging. Now, these are so many different services that you can benefit from and I will not discuss them here in this video because I feel that it's not fair to put that against MongoDB itself. Now here we're discussing this from a database perspective. Obviously, if you're into all of these features, then you would probably maybe go for Firebase because you want to use so many different features. But MongoDB also has solid authentication and storage functionalities that you can look into if you're going into MongoDB Atlas. So keep that in mind. Now, without straying too much from the topic, I just have to state that Firebase, as well as all of these different services that I just listed and talked about, it provides two different database services. The first one being the Firebase Real-Time Database. Now, this was the original Firebase database, but then a few years later, they came up with the Cloud Firestore, which is real-time database on steroids, basically, and it's just a much more powerful and stronger version of real-time database. However, there are many reasons for you to prefer using the real-time database, and there are many developers who do to this day. So just because Firestore is newer, not necessarily does it mean that if this is something that um, this is definitely what you should go for. So for more on that, real-time DB versus Cloud Firestore, I also have a video specifically concerning this comparison. So check that out if you're interested. So enough about what we have. So these are basically our options. We have these different MongoDB versions, these two different Firebase services or database services. And now we can just sort of check out the prices and sort of understand what we have going here. So first I'm going to start off with the Firebase pricing and then the MongoDB pricing and then sort of compare and just give some points or conclusions about these things. So to start with the Firebase pricing, the important thing to know about Firebase is that it has two basic plans. There is the normal plan, so the free plan, just the Spark plan, that's what they call it. And there is the second plan, which is called the Blaze plan. And one of these is free, the other one is pay as you go. So depending on how much you use, 
from the database, how much requests you have, reads, writes, storage you're taking up, and all these sorts of different parameters that could determine how much you pay. So depending on that, you pay a certain amount. Now before they had a series of different plans, but I believe that recently this is all that they have. This is straight from the Firebase pricing website, so this isn't anything I've created or anything new, but this is something that you should keep in mind. So to continue on, so this is part of the same table necessarily. So these are these products and these are the uh, Spark plan uh, features and these are the Blaze plan features. So the reason a lot of people tend to uh, stress about Firebase is the pay as you go feature might be explosive. So you should keep that in mind. So before we discuss anything else, it's important to discuss the idea of clean code. Now, I know that this is something constantly repeated and reiterated in the programming community, in the dev community, but it's important to focus on writing good code that's going to ensure that you will not make too many requests, too many updates into the database. There are bugs that you could have that could possibly be sending way too many reads to the database or requests. And then this will just end you with a very large Firebase bill and you really want to avoid that because this would really break the bank, would set you back in your startup. So I stress this. Now, obviously if you're a small app or startup, you're probably going to start with the free version if you do choose Firebase, but this is a warning that you should start even as you are just a small app, just Start with good coding practices. This is a recommendation on my part because you don't want to regret this later You don't want to grow as a startup and then have your engineers just go back and reformat all of this code Just to make it more clean more concise and less sort of calls to the firebase database But that's just something to keep in mind now just going back here We have the spark plan and the blaze plan now, the Spark plan with Cloud Firestore, it provides you with one gigabyte total of stored data. Now, if this is specifically text, textual data, so this is from the database and not cloud storage, so this is textual data, this is actually really good because one gigabyte of text is a lot of text, meaning that you can store pretty much a lot of data. So do not expect to run out of the Cloud Firestore um, limits that you have very quickly. You're actually probably not going to anytime soon in your early days of your startup or in, even in the early growth of your startup. However, as for the other parts, such as the cloud storage, where you're storing photos and videos on the cloud. Now, if you're an app that relies heavily on media, such as photos or videos, now this is obviously not related to cloud storage, to cloud fire storage specifically, but to cloud storage. So in that case, you might actually break the limits, but not in the, in the database part, in the actual storage part. So if you're more about data, you will probably not break this limit anytime within your early days as a startup. If you do, then there is obviously a massive bug in your code or a something that's sort of repeating itself way too many times. So you should always check that out. Make sure you're not inserting too much data. Make sure you're not keeping too much irrelevant data. Make sure your updates are actually updates and not just new insertions. Now, this might sound stupid, but it's actually one of the causes that you can potentially have a um, a very explosive uh, number of uh, database items. So just keep that in mind. So like I said, for textual data, there is pretty much here nothing you need to worry about in the early days of your startup. By the time that you will need more of this textual data, you should probably be making some money um, from your startup and getting some revenue that you can reinvest into this part of Firebase. But like I said, this is pay as you go, so it depends on how much you use. Now, Firebase here, they know that huge corporations, large enterprises with lots of amounts of data would here have to pay them pretty much a lot. So keep that in mind, like if you plan on being the next big corporation, then maybe this is something you need to keep in mind. So just, this is pretty much like an overview of the Firebase pricing. Now let's move on to the MongoDB pricing. So MongoDB is actually open source and you can download it and use it on your own machine. It is completely free if you want to use MongoDB on your own servers. So if you have servers for your startup or a company, and I know it might sound like a stretch for a small startup, but you never know, you could have servers of your own if you do, if you do so, MongoDB is completely free in this case. So 
with no limits. So in this case, I highly support going for MongoDB because it is just a more solid long-term solution. So if you can get it free on your own servers, then you will not have to worry about later on when you grow as a company, you have to start with the Firebase pay as you go plan. So that's something to keep in mind. However, if you choose to go for serverless, so you're using the MongoDB servers themselves, you actually have to pay for it. And that's sort of their golden rule. So it's free if it's your own server, it's paid if it's serverless. Now to talk about the pricing specifically, so for MongoDB Atlas, which is the cloud database of MongoDB, and you can store it on any different cloud provider. So this is sort of similar in a way to Firebase in which you have a NoSQL database hosted on the cloud. Now you have these uh, different flat rate plans. So this flat rate thing tends to be very appealing to many business owners because the pay as you go thing can appear a bit too scary when you worry that if your users just explode by on overnight, you could say you could have this huge bill lined up from Firebase the next day. So keep that in mind. So the, you have these flat rates, potentially $95 a month for a large company could prove to be cheaper than what Firebase offers with pay as you go. However, it, we must note that the Firebase services are really wider. So you're also here paying for the authentication as well as you're paying for the cloud storage as well as everything else. Now we do have authentication in MongoDB Atlas, but it's just not as many services as Firebase. So keep that in mind. So here, I want to just go back into that whole debate of which one of these databases has better features for your application, because like I said, this is already part of a previous video. So as for pricing, these are the prices you have. Now you have a free option. You get 512 megabytes of storage free and you can scale up to five gigabytes. It's not a lot of storage, so it's less than the Firebase free version. So for the free version, maybe you could go for Firebase, but for the long term, I believe MongoDB is essentially cheaper still than the pay as you go version that could necessarily explode and relies heavily on the code quality that you have. Another thing to keep in mind is that MongoDB Realm is the one for mobile pricing. Uh, for mobile development and if you're interested in the pricing for mobile specifically then MongoDB Realm is where you should look and these are the different prices that you have so you have these prices technically they are still cheaper than the Firebase pay as you go platform however uh, you also get to start free so you have a start free button where you can start with a smaller scale application or a startup and then you can just pay more later and it's still cheaper than firebase pay as you go so in conclusion firebase is super good for beginners and small startups and freelancers so this is definitely something that you keep in mind and i know here we're discussing only pricing but it's good to discuss the pricing in the context of the databases in general so you want firebase because it's free at the beginning but also it's cheaper in terms of time as well as developer power because here you you don't have these necessarily highly skilled tens of engineers all working on the back end part. So maybe you have a couple of engineers and this is a startup and people are maybe working for very little or very free. So, so you want something that's easier to code in general. So here we go back to the actual coding process and not just the pricing. So for a free version for smaller startups with good ability to have clean, concise code, maybe this is actually a good choice. However, like I said, as you grow, it will be very expensive, especially if you're an app heavily reliant on media. So if you heavily rely on the uploading and downloading of videos, photos, audio clips, this could be problematic because you might have to pay a lot for the storage for the users. And on the other hand, for MongoDB, it is the best version hands down for larger data enterprises because it is extremely cheaper. For smaller startups, it's less appropriate. You do have free plans, but like I said, so if you're a small startup, you might not have that much manpower to be able to just code the extra lines of code and the extra code that MongoDB requires from you. So this is sort of different in this case and it's dependent on that variable as well and not just the prices. So I hope you found this video useful. I hope the information provided gives you some insight on what to use for your app or startup please leave a comment if you did and let me know what you chose or if you have any further questions so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye bye